Okay, uh, in this uh, episode, we're going to go ahead and practice using those uh, definitions of work and power to make some calculations about people moving around. Uh, we're talking really about mechanical work and mechanical power. Um, so we're looking at how fast things move, how far they move, uh, how high they can go, those kinds of things. All right, so Bart runs up a 2.91 meter uh, high flight of stairs at constant speed in 2.15 seconds. If Bart's mass is 65.9 kilograms, determine the work which he did and his power rating. Now we're going to make the assumption that Bart is applying an upward force to move himself that is going to be equal to his weight, which is mg. Uh, we're going to use that applied force to determine the uh, work done, and then we're going to figure out the power rating by bringing in the time. So first the work uh, is going to be the applied force. Now in this case that's going to be equal to m times g. And we've got to multiply it by the distance that we're going to move. In this case, it's the height. And we're going to need to multiply it by the cosine of the angle between the displacement s and the force. Now, we're moving straight up. So s is up, fa is up. They're both 90 degrees, 90 minus 90. The angle is 0. That's going to make this the cosine of 0, which is 1. So it's not going to be any impact on our answer. Again, the applied force is going to be equal to mg. Essentially, the s, the change in height, is going to be h. Now, whenever you lift something at a constant velocity, essentially the work done is mgh. Uh, that's also equal to the potential energy change. Again, work is the change of energy. Okay, so in this case, we have uh, 65.9 kilograms. We're going to use 10 newtons for, per kilogram for simplicity. And we're going to multiply that by 2.91 meters. Okay, so 659 times 2.91 gives us a amount of work done of 1,917.69. Now, at most, we have three significant figures in the seconds and three significant figures here. If we call that 10.0, we'll give it three significant figures. That's 1,920 joules worth of work. Now, the power rating is simply your work divided by time. It's the rate at which you did that work. So power is going to be the work done divided by time. So 1,920 joules worth of work. And we're going to divide by the time of uh, 2.15 seconds. 1920 divided by 2.15, and we're at 893. That's three significant figures, so we'll stick with that. 893 watts. Okay, now again, be careful. That big W there is not work. That big W uh, right here is watts, the way we measure the power, joules per second. Okay, on a recent adventure trip, Anita Brake uh, was climbing and rocks again. We're going to assume she's lifting her body uh, 20 meters in 100 seconds. We're going to assume that it's a constant velocity kind of lift. That's going to allow us to say that the work that she did was equal to mgh. Again, we're assuming just like Bart, she's going straight up in terms of her displacement. Now, I should mention Bart didn't run straight up. He ran at an angle on a stairs. But again, displacement is the straight line from where you started to where you finished. So in the vertical direction, his displacement is the height. Same thing for Anita Brake. She'd probably be moving back and forth uh, in climbing the rocks, but her overall displacement is going to be a straight line up from where she started to where she finished. Um, <clears throat> so her work is going to be MGH again. That's going to be equal to her change in potential energy. Uh, she's 80 kilograms to three significant figures. We're going to multiply that by 10 for simplicity's sake. And we're going to multiply that by her height of 20 meters. So 80 times 10 would be 800. 800 times 20 uh, would be 16. Uh, okay, it would be 16,000. Uh, that's Jules. That's the work that she did. Now, her time, those time didn't come into that. Again, work has nothing to do with time. Uh, it's a change of energy. It's not how much 
uh, how rapidly you change the energy. It's just over this motion, this is how much energy you have changed. Uh, to calculate her power again, all we're going to do is it's a rate quantity, so we're going to take power is the work that she did divided by the time. So 16,000 joules uh, divided by her time of 100 seconds. That's nice. We get rid of the two zeros, and she has a power rating of 160 watts. Okay, again, that big capital W there stands for watts. You don't really have to write out the word watts, but be careful, don't mix it up with the W for work. Uh, 160 watts, you know, a reg regular light bulb is around 100 to 150 watts. So over this time period, she's not generating a huge amount of power. She's probably gonna climb at a nice steady pace as she goes up the rocks. Uh, my favorite physics teacher who came up with this, uh, kind of like the little uh, hamsters rowing on the commercial. Uh, it's got squirrels, which he uses to uh, provide power by doing push-ups. Uh, each squirrel has a distance, an average distance of five centimeters per push. Uh, there's a lot of data in this one that we've got to collect. Don't worry about that. Um, <clears throat> So, first of all, there's 23 of them. So we're going to multiply everything by 23. Uh, their mass is 1.1. Uh, they only do the work on the up part. Their average height is centimeters, 5. We're going to need to convert that to meters. Uh, they're doing 71 push-ups per minute. That's minutes, not seconds, so we're going to deal with that. Uh, we're going to figure out the work done and the power generated in one minute. So... Again, we're going to talk about work. We're going to talk about the fact that they are lifting their bodies. So it's going to be MGH. Uh, but we're also going to multiply that by the number of repetitions or times that they do it. Uh, and it's only on the up, so we don't have to worry about the down. Uh, and we also have to multiply the fact that there's 23 of them. Okay, so MGH, they have a mass of 1.1 kilograms each on average. Uh, G stays 10 newtons per kilogram. Uh, the height is 5 centimeters. Move the decimal place two points to the left. That's 0.05 meters. Uh, they're doing an average of 71 per minute, so we're going to need to multiply by 71 push-ups. And we're going to need to multiply by uh, 23 because there's 23 squirrels. So that will get us the work done. Um, work done per squirrel, per push-up is a mere 0.55 joules. We're going to multiply that by 71 push-ups, and we're going to multiply that by 23 squirrels, and we are up to an amazing 898, or 890, rounded off, joules worth of work for our family of squirrels. Now, we're going to want to divide that by the time to develop the power. Power equals work divided by time. So 890 joules. Now, we want power in watts, so we really want to divide it by 60 seconds. We need the number of uh, seconds, not the number of minutes. 60 seconds per minute, so 890. Sorry, that's 900 when I looked the number rounded off. Rounded off incorrectly, it's 900 joules. Okay, so 900 divided by 60, um, and we're looking at a power rating for our little machine here of 15 watts. Now, that means keeping 23 squirrels going at this constant rate of 71 push-ups per minute still only provides you a total amount of power of 15 watts. That's not enough to run the light bulb in a refrigerator. So, that's pretty weak. You would think that, after all, there are squirrels. Um, <clears throat> but just an idea of how you could calculate this out if you have multiple items doing the work. Talked about an elevator in Gaichi 1. Elevators are classic examples because they lift things again, so it's easy to figure out the work done. Um, since they're lifting, the work done is going to be MGH. Uh, it's 715 kilograms worth of mass 
Okay, it could be the elevator plus people, it could be just the elevator, whatever it is. Um, again, G is going to be 10 newtons per kilogram. Uh, and we're going to lift it to a height of 11 meters above where we started. Again, we're assuming we're going straight up and that the force, the tension in this case pulling us up is also going to act in the same direction. So for all of the information we've done in this guide sheet section, uh, we've been using a cosine of zero degrees, which is one. Uh, <clears throat> that allow us to get the work done. So 715 times 10 times 11 and round it off to looks like three significant figures and we're at 7,870. 78,700, sorry, um, joules. Okay, and then we go for power. Again, power is the rate at which we do that work. So power is simply work divided by time. So 7, 78,700 joules uh, divided by the time. It is in seconds, so that's good. We'll have joules per second, which will be watts. And we'll get uh, to three signal figures. We're at eight. 8,420 8, watts of power. So uh, to make that happen, uh, that, that uh, elevator is going to need a, an electric motor, most likely, uh, for an elevator of eight point, at least 8.42 kilowatts. So again, in the United States, we make our motors and me measure them in horsepower. Uh, in most of the world, if you go to buy a car, you don't know how many horses it has under the hood. Uh, you can, you'll be told the amount of kilowatts that it can uh, put out. So kilowatts, thousands of watts. Okay, so that's power. Power is real straightforward. It's just the rate of doing work. So it's going to be the work divided by the time.